Well, what a special event tonight. Thank you, uh, Rachel and the ladies that made this possible to be out tonight and fellowship in, in love, God's love. This is a love feast. Praise the Lord. Wow. What a, what a blessing to come on our property and Bible college is, you know, the students are here looking for the crumbs from the table. <laughs> and, uh, and a faithful, the faithful team that makes our church work and run every day. And, uh, the ladies that, you know, men and women, we, we have our differences, but in a very real way, there isn't any. Uh, we, are, we are so much the same, and we have been born again with a new heart and accepted into God's family and anointed of the Holy Spirit to understand things, to live by faith, to love each other. And the, the women in this church that, that serve, you know, day after day and have done amazing things are, uh, you know, at the very heart of God's work. And, and we just know that and recognize that all the time, what God has done to save us is absolutely beyond, beyond words. Second Corinthians 9.15, it's an unspeakable, um, it actually means that, you know, it can't be articulated what it is that we have received. We have not yet seen what this is. So, um, and then I'm, I'm so blessed with the unity and the love that we have in our church and the, the cross and bringing things to the cross and learning God. We are very honored to really know and believe that we are actually learning God. You know, how many people really get, get, get to know that and do that and experience that and believe that? That's amazing. So we know God. That's, wow. We have so much to boast in and to say in our hearts. By the way, uh, Pastor Dan Strigioni, when I saw him a week ago, he was struggling to breathe uh, I sat on his bedside. Uh, he had pulled a mask off his face and he was struggling. And when the nurse and I came into the room and then, and I talked to him today for 20 minutes and he was absolutely, you know, it's like amazing that he can talk, that he breathe, he can breathe. Oh, uh, Wow. That was a close call. The doctor said that they have given him, out of all the hospitals in Maryland, they have pumped more oxygen into him than anybody else in the whole state of Maryland. <laughs> oh, it was a close call, but I believe he's on the other side. Thanks for your prayers. Uh, okay, point number one. By the way, uh, Rachel's dad, we were in college together, and um, our, our, ch our church phone had a message from a guy in Colorado, and he left his name and number, and he said, I, I went to college with, with Tom Schaller 50 years ago, and he left his number, and, and he asked me to call him, and uh, I called him, and we hadn't talked for 50 years, and we, but he got saved same time. And we both were like crying on the phone. 
about what God has done for us. And, um, and her dad, uh, Rob Hedeman, uh, David Moore, others, you know, it was, uh, it, it's pretty incredible. And we're just uh, boasting in the Lord tonight and thankful. Okay. Uh, first little exercise. I want you to close your eyes and pretend that you're blind. Uh, so do it. You don't have to do it because you might get, you might be paranoid or something, or somebody might steal your wallet. Uh, you don't have to do it, but if you close your eyes and say, you know, I cannot see, but I can hear. Hmm. So if I lived like this, that I could not see, but I could hear, um, then in a way, my ears have to be my eyes. So I, I still have my eyes closed, and I'm thinking about this. And, and, and what does it mean? I close my eyes, and I live only with my ears. I have ears. That's all that I have, ears. Not eyes, but only ears. So my ears become my life. And in a way, I really believe that this is what God is teaching us. That we are not living by what we see, but by what we don't see, but we can hear what I can hear, you know, but not the motorcycle off in the di distance, but something, something more, and this is the word of God. If I don't have the word of God, then in my heart, what do I hear? What is, what is it that I'm listening to? A lot of times there isn't anything. There isn't, there's chatter, there's uh, arguments, there's anger, or in the book of Job, there's evil, there's injustice, there's pain. There is the devil, there is the devil's work. But in the book of Job, God brings Job to like a place of ears where he's hearing. And I want, to, I want to say four things about the Word of God. Turn, to, first of all, to 2 Timothy. <clears throat> and Lord, I pray that you would, you, you, Lord, would anoint these words, take over, minister your word, to our hearts, that it would be a living word, living word to our ears. Jesus spoke a lot about our ears, what we hear. In Jesus' name, amen. So chapter two, and we have verse from verse 15. We'll start reading. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. First word is authority. The Bible and authority. If we are in a world and we don't have any authority, we have no word of authority, then we're very vulnerable 
without authority, we we have we have we have chatter, we have hurt, we have pain, we have complaints, we have murmuring, we have injustice, we have death, we have COVID, we have fear of our families or uh, fear of my future. Uh, financially, and so on. So where is the authority for life? Where is the authority for my life? You know, so if I shut my eyes, and if with my ears, there is authority on my ears, authority from the word, if the word is able to say, let there be light, and there is light, or take up your bed and walk, and the man takes up his bed and walks, then that's a word of authority. When Abigail met David as a counselor and went out to correct him or challenge him or love him or lead him, she was a woman who had authority. Uh, when Naomi said to Ruth, glean in Boaz's field, that was authority. It was a word. Authority. The Bible. And just read it. Just read it. Like, read it as a way of life. But you have to, in a way, you have to shut your eyes to the TV and to the, the window, you know, what's out the window and to the car and many other things. I shut my eyes and I wait upon the Lord and I ask for the word, study to show yourself approved, like you have a word of authority. Um, Jesus told the disciples many times what to do. And when they did it, there was authority from heaven. Launch out into the deep. Throw your net on the right side. Now, uh, some of you are raising families. What's the authority that you have? Where's the authority come from? Uh, some of us are pastoring people. Uh, talking to them in a coffee shop or at home or on the phone. And what is it that I, my, my, I close my eyes and what is it that I hear from our pure hearts? Because God gave us a new heart. We have now a pure heart. And he speaks to us. And that word, number one, is authority. So verse um, uh, 16. But shun... Profane, that means common, in vain, babblings. Uh, can you walk away from a conversation that isn't going anywhere? Can you walk away from your best friend and cut it off? Can you turn off something that you're watching? Can you shun? You know, can you, like, turn away and have no interest in that thing? And all of our lives are filled with things that are fascinating. But uh, closing my eyes might help me hear. It might help me focus on what is not seen. Uh, the... Gossip that is like low-level chatter and gossip is attractive to some people. But you, you have to, you and I, we have to uh, change. We cannot be gossipers and listen to gossip. We have to change. And, and, and how? It's by closing my eyes. In a way, it's like... I can't see. I'm blind. But as I am blind, it's, here's a good verse. Isaiah said, who is blind like my servant, the Messiah? Like Jesus was blind to some things. 
because he was with the Father. With the Father. When he saw the Father, he heard from the Father. He had made his life holy and he had this authority because his eyes really became his ears. And he was blind, but he was uh, uh, our Messiah, our Savior, who taught us. So this is really written to Timothy, who was a pastor. And the pastor had to shun uh, certain conversations. There are some people send me emails and... Uh, I don't answer them, or I answer them when I want to. One of them is, uh, let's see, one, two, three months. I haven't answered yet. Maybe I will. In my inbox, or no, I'm sorry, my drafts, I think Jen, I asked Jen last time, and I think we had 467 emails in my drafts that I never sent. Imagine, I wrote a letter out, I mean, I, it was an email, and I never sent it. Because I'm not into, I, I want to be a good pastor, and I want to help people. I want to answer them, I want to respect them, but not everybody. I don't respect everybody's conversation. I don't respect everybody's argument or everybody's complaint. I don't respect that, because I can't afford to. Because you, in, in Proverbs 26, it says, answer not a fool, lest you be like him. And in some conversations, your eyes will be opened, but your ears will be deaf. Your eyes will be open to something that's going to steal away from you your time, your heart, your love, your worship, your prayer. We are way so emotional and very common with our arguments and our way of life. We fight easily as people in this culture that we live in. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has their rights. Everybody is crying about something. Everybody is, you know, not everybody, you know what I'm saying. Okay, I got to calm down. <laughs> Look at that verse. It says, shun these, these hyper-emotional, offended people who believe they have a right. They have a right to every... They all, yeah, all, when do we suffer? When are we told, stop it? When are we told to be quiet? When are we told to be wise? When, I, when Job was with God, when he suffered all that time, and then he, when God met him, he, Job put his hand on his mouth and said, I, I am not going to speak anymore. I have darkened counsel with knowledge. I have been arguing with God, and I repent, he said. So this is a beautiful life because, number one, the word of God is authority. And when that authority is in your life, you're able to shun or avoid trap, traps that people fall into. Uh, why, why is the divorce rate very high today? Because people are talking and drinking and speaking their minds and their minds are nuts. They hurt people. They, they, we are selfish and drinking a little bit in a marriage. Get into your arm and say things the next day. You, re, you were so sorry you said them. And people are living in, uh, in this whole emotional world of arrogance. And their eyes are wide open. Yeah, this is wrong. And I respect you folks here tonight for listening and, and enjoying this because I know you believe what I'm saying. That the word of God, we're going to hear it tonight and tomorrow, but 
you, you know, the Lord has saved us. The Lord has put his spirit in us. The Lord has given gifts to the body. The Lord has opened our Bibles for us. And our Bibles are, are this your Bible in your world, your house, in your heart. And when you come to the church, the whole design of it is to encourage us and clarify and manifest the authority of God's word in our lives. I, I, we, we did class last night, and after it, three guys came to my house to do sauna, and one of them is brand new, and he told me, like, his incredible life and what he had, what has happened. He's an awesome guy. And I, and God, not, he wasn't in our church. His aunt witnessed to him, and, and Jesus Christ changed, saved him. Jesus Christ saved him. He is saved, that guy. He is saved. Wow. So, <laughs> a very, very bad man was saved. Wow. And I won't tell you his name. But, um, you know, this is okay. So, I'm really going slow, aren't I? I'm really speaking very slow, but I love it. I love being here. It's amazing. Okay, let's go for it now. Go to 2 Timothy 2, 16. For, but shun profane and vain babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Somebody's getting deeper and deeper into the swamp. They're getting deeper and deeper into the thick mud up to their necks. And they cannot stop. If stop, knock it off. Get humble. Go before God. Shut your eyes. And, and let the Lord open your ears and start to meditate and put aside so many, so many things. And, and I know, because I, I raised a family and I've been in the, I um, mar married and um, on different times, things go upside down for all of us. Uh, I, sometimes I had this thing in, in, from the scripture about frogs they come out of the ground. Frogs come out of the king's mouths in the book of Revelation. And it would sometimes be in our house, it seemed like whatever I said, it was like a frog came out of my mouth. I said it, you know, I could tell. It was like our household is under demonic attack. Our household, my, the devil would like me to get in a fight with my wife. Or the devil would like me to get in a fight with the people in the church. Or the devil would like me to be, you know, restless. And I was restless. Uh, when Dr. Stevens was here as the pastor and I was here as with him, there were times when I was restless. And I knew it. And there were times when things would bother me. But I knew it. But I also knew, like, from the teaching that this is a this is a a spiritual issue and i need to have years to hear go to god and wait upon god and not move out of my restlessness my anxiety or my 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 frustration but it happens to all of us so um Number one is with the word there is authority. Number two is clarity. The Bible is the clearest word in the universe. It's clear. It's not complicated. It's not uh, has to be explained like in many words. It's clear. A word. It, it, when the Lord sent Moses to talk to Pharaoh, the words were clear. 
It was clear. When God said that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, the Holy Spirit says that word to you, and it's very clear, and it goes to your heart. So this is, this is linked with authority. Because um, like when we had our challenge here this past year and a half or so with COVID, and we were looking for God's leading, it was beautiful because we were operating with people that were waiting on God. And we didn't talk a lot. We were waiting for a clear word. And when it, when, it was amazing. We have seven trustees. I went to the meeting because we might have to go to court. We'd have to spend a lot of money. And we didn't, I didn't know if that's what we should do. And so we, wanted, we had a trustee meeting. And I, I, they said, what do you think? I said, I don't want to say what I think. I want you guys to tell me what God is saying to you. You guys go first. So we went around the room, Doug Brooks, uh, um, Isaac Hofsis, uh, Craig Pereira, uh, Barry Quirk, uh, P. Wistera, Mike Williams, Pastor Taggart, and went around the rooms. And we were, it was clear. There was unity. There was clarity. It seemed like the Holy Spirit was telling all of us what to do, like how to, how to think about it. Beautiful. So how does that relate to you? I think um, we could worry a lot in life, but the Bible says not to worry. Um, there's a sure word of prophecy. There's a quietness that happens in your heart, and there's a clarity that comes into your life. What about this or what about that? I do not know about that. I, that I don't know. I cannot see that. I do not know about it, but I hear. I want to live by what I hear. That's how I want to live. But, you know, this is very dangerous. Or this is, Yeah, I don't know about that. That's not what I'm hearing because my, my, uh, my discipline, what I want to practice is the, the word that is clear in our heart. If the vision is not clear, Habakkuk says, then wait. It will become. The book of Daniel, these, will be, these things will be clear in the end days, in Daniel 12. Uh, there are things that Jesus said. He said, you will know this later. There are things that you may have learned in Bible school many years ago that have become clear in time. The, the word of God is the greatest gift to us. And so this is uh, the second thing. Go to uh, verse um, 17. In their word will eat as doth a canker. This is the, all the talking going on. And this is in the church that Timothy is a pastor of. And he gives the names of two Men that are talking and talking and talking. Hymenius and Philetus. Throughout church history, there have been people that contradict Athanasius, the church father that argued for the Trinity. There was uh, heresies about salvation. There were heresies recently in the last 100 to 200 years about the inerrancy of the Bible. There's always been the heretics that are, that are talking and talking and arguing and so on. But it's uh, working like a cancer. Verse 18. Who concerning the truth have erred. So the third thing I want to say about the word is we have authority, clarity, and then we have necessity. Necessity. You might see, say you can raise your family without the Word of God, but actually I'm here to say the Word of God isn't an option. It's a necessity. If you're going to live a valuable life, 
If you're going to live a blessed life, you have to have it in your, in your heart, in your life. You have to be a hearer of it, a student of it, like have a Bible around the house and, and sit back and read it. It takes effort. If sometimes it's just hard work. But uh, my, my son Kyle showed me a video that he had for inspiration when he was studying at school. And it was a video of a guy sitting at the desk with his books open. And that's all the video was. Hour after hour, the man just sat at the desk twirling a pencil and reading and studying. And I said, Kyle, did this inspire you? <laughs> because it did. It helped me. It looks so boring. And that that guy could sit. He, that's what he does. He videos his study time. And all he has is sitting there looking at his books, and he's just studying hours after hours after hours. Uh, maybe we have left the discipline of study. Maybe in our culture we are so busy running. Maybe we have stopped reading. Instead, we are watching. Walk, look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. I'm watching a video. I'm watching a movie. I'm watching, I'm, my eyes are wide open. I'm trying to say that there's another way to live. And that's to shut your eyes and turn your ears into eyes. What do you hear? I hear David in his psalm. I hear him, I can see him in my heart. I see God in my heart, in prayer, in faith, in the Holy Spirit, I have shut my eyes while we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen by the Bible. It's a, not an option, it's a necessity. Proverb uh, Job said it in uh, 23, 12, your words are more than my necessary food. In the King James, the word food there is italics, which means it's not there in the text. So the word can meet, read, I, your word is more than my necessities. Necessities are like, you know, air and, and, um, and heat, you know, temperature and um, water and food and but the Bible, the necessity of it, because we are sheep, and we have to hear the voice of the shepherd, and he has to correct me. Proverbs six twenty two. He has to correct me, lead me in and out. He must help me. You know, he must help me. I have to start by shutting my eyes. And he will open my ears. Psalm 40, he opened my ears to hear as the learned. Isaiah 50, verse 4, Psalm 40 is another one. He digs in my ears, is in one version, that Jesus' ears were dug out that he could hear. Okay, so go to the next verse, please. It says, um, they have erred. And they were teaching that the res resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. How many people, their faith is overthrown by what they see, uh, by, uh, by a false teaching, by not being aware or, or awake to the age we live in, which is the age of deception. Watch what happens in the next 10 years if we live that long. What do you think is going to happen with our technology and information and everything? How, how, how foolish will we be? How emotional will we be? What do you think will happen? You know, how will our world go? What will happen? I don't know, but I want to be different. I don't want to be controlled by the media. I want to be a thinking person. I want God's wisdom. And the Bible is a necessity. 
It's necessary in the age that we live in. It's necessary. I'll be deceived without it. And and so and you, I, I know I'm kind of feel like I'm preaching to the choir because you guys are, you're, you know, you're, you're, but yeah, I don't, I'm happy to do that. I love to preach to the choir. Yeah, I've got one last thing to say. And um, so verse 19, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. So there are people that get off track, but the Lord knows them that are his. He can bring them back into fellowship, or he may not. I mean, he he's willing and desiring, but if my eyes are as big as saucers and my ears are like not, nothing, I live by my eyes, but my ears are nothing, then, then how can he speak to me? How can he lead me? So we learn this in our private devotional in our walk of faith, in our victory over sin. Wow. Victory over sin. Wow. It's amazing. In our simplicity and our joy. The fourth thing is we have necessity, and the fourth word is sufficiency. Sufficiency means you, it's enough. It's enough. It means, uh, is it going to be enough? It, will it be enough? Do I, do I need more? It'll be enough. His word is enough. It's sufficient, Psalm 19, um, because it brings presence of God. His word is spirit and life. It's enough. Um, uh, somehow, I think that sometimes people feel, no, I need, I need this, or I need this to be fixed, or I need to go over there, or I need, I need to, to, to make a change this way or something. Be, be aware of the fact that sometimes we make decisions based on, on something we're hungry for or desire that we should bring before God. And it might be the Lord will say, you don't know. You don't need that. Walk by faith in me. My, your faith will deliver you. Your faith, say no to that thing and live by faith. And as you walk by faith, you'll find I am enough. I am sufficient. My word is enough for you. You will enjoy it, eat it, enjoy it, live by it. It will keep you. It has authority. It has clarity, it is a necessity, and it is sufficient. Isn't that good? Uh, let's let's uh, close now with a thought here. You know, somebody could be... I used to live, like, near Romania. I, I lived in Hungary, and I did it. I did a countryside mission trip one time over the border into Romania to a small village. They invited me. And there was a, it was a very small village, and um, there was little houses and beautiful little, little place, but very poor. And people had chickens. And we had um, a meeting, like in a barn, somebody's barn, and... And um, I, you love these people and how they live and everything. And, and um, I talked about jealousy. I remember the message. I said, some of you have seven chickens and somebody else has a hundred chickens. And you that have seven, you're jealous of the person that is a hundred, you know. And they all kind of start laughing and, you know, they know I'm telling the truth, right? Anyway... Uh, no matter where you live, poor people are jealous of other people, rich people are jealous of other people, common people are jealous of other people. But there's something about closing your eyes. And I, I don't care. I can't see that. I'm not looking at that. 
I'm not talking about it. I'm not involved in that thing. I got my eyes, my ears are hearing from God, and he's loving me and giving me enough. It's sufficient. His word to my spirit, it's enough. And then you go around like as a servant without jealousy and without any internal struggle. You are free. So um, we will face, here, here maybe is when we finish, you might face, you and me, might face horrible times in the future. We do not know. Horrible times can come. This COVID maybe was an exercise for us. The brother that told me last night, he said, before I was saved, I was so afraid of COVID. After I got saved, I didn't fear it at all. Not at all. Like God took it away. Um, we, we might have ahead of us hard times in the next 10 years, let's say, some kind. Might be horrible things that will happen to us. Maybe a family, uh, or maybe there will be economical, or I don't know, I hope not. I, I'm not hoping for it, I'm just saying. This message is, is the only real answer for one day meeting God and facing reality. People that are crying and whining about all this stuff, whatever is not fair, to them, they are not capable of facing what could be down the road. They, if you are like them, then change and become different. By, by, by a metaphor, by just a, just a picture, shut your eyes, wait on God and learn to wait on God and read the scripture and listen and fellowship. And this is what I believe with all my heart, that this word is going to keep you, it's going to speak to you, it's going to be enough for you no matter what you go through. It'll be clear. It'll have authority. It'll guide you in your life. And one day, the angels will say, when you, have, when you go to heaven, the angels will say, how did this man, how did this woman, how did they live such a life? And God will say, and it'll be clear to everyone, but I mean, you know, whatever way it's communicated in heaven, but everybody will know the only way that that person could have lived that way was that God gave them his word. It went to their heart. They embraced it. They believed it. They were, they were different because Jesus gave them the word. How important, what, what is a church without a Bible? I don't know what that is. I, I, I used to go, you know, it's, I don't know. It's not the, our point tonight. What is a, what is a church with he, false teaching? What is a church with a lot of emotional people that are unhappy about all kinds of things? Where, how will it grow? How will anybody's life change? How will they hear the gospel? No, you folks are people that have dealt with a lot of baggage by shutting your eyes and having ears tuned and hearing. And that word that you have been hearing is how you have been living. And your life is greatly glorifying God. And the angels are interested in this. They can see it. Christ is there. Christ is there. So uh, that's our message tonight. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you that you have given us a word of God 
ministry and each of these ladies here tonight, every one of us, everybody and the men here on the sidewalk and anybody listening, we are all saying in our hearts, you have helped us by, by, by teaching us to shut our eyes and have our ears become our eyes, ears in tune with the authority of your word. Thank you for what you have done and continue to lead and guide us in it. In your great name, your great name, your great name, your, and all the glory to you, Lord. All, you, all of it, you have done something here. And we boast in it all the day long. Thank you for it. And teach us more about it in your name. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And the ladies, let's see, Barbara is from New York. And then anybody else I see here, maybe from another state, anybody you want to stand up? I don't know, Rachel did it. For my sake, Amy, you, you, anyway, you, you want to stand if you're from another state outside of Maryland and you're visiting us to, to be here this weekend. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gloria and Joni. Oh, New York. Wow. Great. Thank you. 